Okay, hey, hi, hey. Be cool, be cool, Hannah. Welcome to today's episode of My Quirky Kitchen. I'm your quirky cook, Hannah the Thumb. Thank you, Jada. Do, what do I do with my hands? I'm your quirky cook, Hannah Bunker. Let's take care of some business first. Erin and I have a podcast. What? What? Go subscribe to the podcast. I am uh, giddy about today's episode of My Quirky Kitchen because it's from my heart. That sounds so silly, but um, it's the truth. I'm gonna make the best chocolate chip cookies that you will ever put in your mouth hole in your entire life. I have been working on perfecting this recipe because I just love all the foods. This is one of those things that I'm like a mad scientist in the kitchen and I think I finally have it to a point where I'm like, this has all of the qualities of my perfect chocolate chip cookie. Crunchy on the outside, soft on the inside, massive chocolate chip chunks, cakey, not gooey, thin, but not too thin, but not too thick. I just am very particular about my chocolate chip cookies, but just like us as human beings, we are constantly being perfected and will be perfected until we die and get to heaven. Not a theological show, but we're, we're tying it in. We're gonna just loop it in there. The other night, and like, I get so excited about things that and prepare myself with deep breaths to tell you that the other night I was on the brink of hitting rim and all of a sudden I just like snapped out of my sleep and was like I should melt the chocolate chips and put coffee grounds in them. So that's what I, I'm doing today. I have this recipe perfected to my standards but I'm also doing a little bit of experimenting too. Let's get started you guys. Take some notes. Remember back in the days whenever you couldn't just go online for a recipe and you actually had to sit and watch a show with your pen and notepad in your hand? I'll post the recipe for you so you don't have to do that. First things first, I gotta put on my apron. We're gonna start with the butter. One of the things that I learned is it's good to use a high fat butter. And so, it sounds like a promotion, but this Kerrygold butter is what I've been using. You're gonna do a pound of butter, you guys. This is not a healthy recipe. It makes me laugh on Pinterest whenever I see these recipes for like keto, healthy cookies and brownies. There is no such thing as a healthy cookie. If you're looking to be healthy, you're, you just need to eat a salad. A cookie that's healthy is not worth eating. You're gonna put it in your mix. And here's what I do. I melt my butter. But I don't stick it in the microwave. Since I have a metal bowl, I fill the sink with hot water, melt it like that. I could put it on the stove or in the microwave, but sometimes I just like to make things harder than they should be. My friend Shelby told me that if you have not sang or danced in the kitchen if you can't remember the last time you, that you did it then you're just too busy and i love that how do you not sing and dance when you're in the kitchen is my question so we've got our our melted butter now we're going to cream together our butter and our sugar so we have two different types of sugar your white sugar and we have your brown sugar a trick in my unscientific opinion for doing this is for beating it together at a really high speed because i noticed that when i did that to put it in scientific terms it made it um uh, what's the word? Fluffier. One and three fourths cup of white sugar. Two and a quarter cup of packed brown sugar. Press that gas pedal. It's starting to look pretty mixed together, so I'm just gonna slow it down while I start mixing my eggs. Every time I have an egg on this show, we practice our one-handed egg crack, and I feel like I'm getting pretty good, but I probably shouldn't say that because I'm probably gonna be humbled right now. So let's, hey, don't even think about it. Like when I don't think about it, I can do a good job. Okay, not thinking about it and we did it. Hey, don't think about it. Just do it, wait. Oh. Think you go, oh. oh. Splattered, it's splattered on the counter. E. coli, don't think about it. We're just chatting and I'm just cracking eggs. Hey, I got nervous. Go, go, gadget, one handed egg crack, boom. Ninja! I'm getting so good at that, ew! So now you're gonna wanna whisk your eggs until you feel 
that you are on the brink of acquiring carpal tunnel. Do it until they're pretty frothy. I have to clean up this egg on the counter or it's gonna make me crazy. I have to disinfect. So when I was three, I had E. coli poisoning and you know, it just caused me to develop hemolytic uremic syndrome and my kidneys shut down and I was on my deathbed all because I had E. coli. So we, we, I tend to get a little freakish about raw egg. Being near death will do that to you. Our eggs are looking very frothy. You and my arthritis starting to kick in. So I think that's a sign that we are ready to Add it to our sugar mix. Turn this bad boy back up to high and then slowly be in your egg mixture. And it's gonna start lifting your butter mixture a little bit to make it even fluffier. All right, all of our eggs are beating. Oh man, this is looking gorgeous. Do one tablespoon of vanilla extract into our wet ingredient. So I'm gonna start combining all of our dry ingredients into a separate bowl. This part gets so messy and is why I'm wearing an apron right now. Okay, so here's another trick. You have two different types of flour. Regular, you know, like all-purpose flour. And then you have bread flour. Bread flour, you have three cups. And here's like the part that I think is like oddly cathartic. It's just like making it even across the top. It's so weird. And three. That's probably why I get things on me because I just LeBron James it up in here. Put your bread flour away. Get it out of the way. We don't need that anymore. Sorry, bread flour. You have to be eating a purpose in life, but your purpose is all. Three cups plus two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Then one tablespoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder, and then two teaspoons of baking soda. Get your whisk. You're gonna whisk all of your dry ingredients together. So now that we've got that whisked together, got it back on and slowly start adding it into my mix. There's something just so beautiful about watching all these ingredients mix together. I don't know if that's silly or if I just find joy in really simple things. Watching this come together is just like, makes me so happy. I think that's just like part of my personality, finding beauty very strange things. Once you get towards the end of your dry mix, it really starts turning into a dough and gets really, really thick. It is looking so beautiful. This is what I'm talking about. When I make this with love, it's like a part of the process of seeing how beautiful it's turning out and then watching people enjoy the thing you poured your heart into. Not your sweat. Hopefully you're not pouring your sweat blood and tears into the things that you're making for people. But hopefully you're pouring your heart into it. Let's get it dumped. The very last. And now comes the part that pulls this whole daggum thing together. I'm, I'm like excited. I'm really excited about, about the chocolate part. Here's the part where we're gonna experiment a little bit. Yo, I told you about the coffee. I pre-made that. Here was my vision for the chocolate chips in this batch that I'm experimenting with. An ounces of bittersweet chocolate, 12 ounces of semi-sweet, and then, oh my gosh, I am just so excited about this. I can hardly contain myself. I, I like have to have a dance break because it's gonna be good. <laughs> I love food. What I did was I took a cup of semi-sweet chocolate and I melted it over a double boiler and I put just a little bit of coconut oil in it so it wouldn't stick to the pan once it was frozen. And then I took one teaspoon of this Kingdom Growers coffee that I got from Lifeway bookstores and I added it into the chocolate. What? 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 Poured it onto the wax paper, spread it out, and then I froze it. And now we have this beautiful chocolate. Ooh, some thunder. So I'm gonna break it into pieces. I'm gonna try to do it before it completely melts. So there's gotta be an easier way to do this without getting chocolate all over myself. Ooh, okay, I know what I'm gonna do. Here's the experimenting part. I love doing this sort of stuff. Get another piece of wax paper, put it over it. Are you getting excited? I am. Oh my gosh. And we're just gonna beat the tar out of it. So, it's kind of working. Okay, I have to try this. You ready? That 
that is a blessing from God. I can't, I can't, I have goosebumps. The hairs on my unshaved legs are standing up. That is so good. And this is gonna be in a cookie. I need to get this in the mix before that melts too much. And I'm gonna add in my coffee chocolate first. I feel like I'm birthing something beautiful. into, what is this? I don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of melting into the cookie dough. Okay, 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 I'm getting so excited. These are probably gonna turn into like chocolate, chocolate chip cookies. So see, it's turning our dough kind of brown. Huh, this isn't turning out like I had hoped because it's kind of turning the dough into like chocolate dough. Ain't nothing wrong with that. So now I'm gonna add in the rest of the chocolate chips. It's like that episode of I Love Lucy where the bread comes out of the kitchen. Okay, you're not gonna put your cookies in the oven right away. You're going to make them into balls, and then you are going to practice your patience, and you're gonna put them in the freezer and let them freeze, and then you're gonna bake them. I make them into about, well, I could say palm size, but that's not an exact measurement because every palm is different, but I make them into a ball that's about the size of my palm, and they end up being about four inch cookies, I think. What I'm gonna do in the underpants of this video, so I will give you two recipes. I will give you the recipe with this, how I made the coffee chocolate, and then I will also give you the recipe without the coffee chocolate, so it ends up being a regular old chocolate chip cookie instead of this creation we made today. I think I'm gonna make that coffee chocolate just to like have in my stash. Call it my mommy stash, the kind that you sit and eat alone in your closet. Another good thing about this recipe is that it makes a ton of cookies and you don't have to bake them. <gasps> you just lost some dough, you guys. Rest in peace. I'm, I'm genuinely sad that this dough is going to waste. It's time for us to sadly step away from the kitchen for a moment while we have to wait for this cookie dough to freeze. I am having a really hard time not wanting to bake them right now, but they will be so much better if we put them in the freezer and let the Lord do his work with them. They are currently being refined in the freezer into who they are supposed to be. So it's been about two and a half hours. We are ready. We're gonna start putting these on a wax paper lined baking sheet. We've got them lined on our baking sheets and we're gonna put them in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes, but I have to do it on two levels. I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer and when it goes off, I'm gonna switch them so they bake evenly. So I've got the rest of the cookie dough balls that are left that aren't baking right now and I'm putting them in a bag and I'm gonna store them in the freezer. It's almost time to switch. Mommy! Ah! Look, they look like little balls of ice cream. Ah! Oh, my oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. Only 10 more minutes to go, you guys. The cookies at the bottom! The cookies are gonna be ready! Ooh, oh. Mommy! They look good, y'all. They're ready! Yay! Oh my word. <laughs> I'm just standing here like this. I waited to put my kids to bed to be able to savor these without having to share. Come on, let's just be honest. Here we go. I'm dead. People, I can't. I can't. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> this with a cup of black coffee. Mm. Mm. The richness that that coffee brings to the chocolate. Putting coffee in it was seriously, that was from the Lord. Look at this. No, like, it's so good. I don't know how to handle it. Have you ever have something like that? This is not good that I've created this because I'm gonna want to eat them all the time. What am I done? This is my last bite, and then I, I have to stop you guys. Head on the back. Oh, chocolate. Thanks for watching this episode of My Quirky Kitchen. It was a lot of fun, and oh, like, totally worth it. Bye bye, cookie. I wish that you could come enjoy a cookie with me because we would just talk about all the things and have cookie and coffee or a glass of milk or whatever you want. It's my fridge is your fridge. I'm just in such a happy place right now. I gotta just eat another cookie, Hannah. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.